Welcome to the video guys, Salt here. Today we are going to be going over focus, focus schools, and focus generation. So before we start, for anyone that does not want spoilers but does want to watch the video, make sure you go and you do the second dream quest. And then to be really sure you don't have spoilers, also do the war within quest. And then once you have those two done, come back to the video and it should be spoiler free. For everyone else, we'll start. So to unlock uh, getting focus and, and start starting to earn it, you're gonna want to do the second dream quest that will unlock a, a mode called Transcendence, which is kind of a baby version of what you'll eventually get, which is called Transference. I won't be going over Transcendence too much because it's just kind of like an interim ability that you have for a brief period in between two quests. So after you do the War Within, you'll unlock Transference, which is this. Um, when you are in your little operator, there's a few different things you can do. You can do your Void Mode which makes you go completely invisible and you can still run around while you're in this mode. This is a really good mode to uh, resurrect people in. So if someone goes down, you can go invisible and then resurrect them while you're like this. That way it's pretty safe. And then the other thing you'll unlock uh, in transference is the uh, void dash. So if I double jump, I start dashing. So it's a really good way to get around. Okay, um, now to completely allow yourself to fully access and to upgrade your focus schools, you're also going to want to do Saya's Vigil and you want to visit the Quill Faction on Cetus. Once you do that, you will be completely ready. So, okay. So I want to briefly just go over the five focus schools and just give a... I'm going to go over them in much, much more detail in this video, but I just want to briefly go over them just quick here. So Unairu is going to be your focus school. If you like armor, you want some uh, knockdown and stagger immunity, it's pretty good for that. Vazarin increases your affinity range out. There are certain Warframes that scale, uh, their ability scale on affinity range rather than modded range. So Vazarin is super good for that. It also has some like good protection abilities. Xenoric is all about energy, energy all day, every day. Naramon has a lot of abilities that are uh, affecting melee. And Madurai has some abilities that, or some passives that increase uh, damage. Actually, they're, his act, they're actives too. So passive and active abilities that affect damage. And also um, really, really good for Eidolons. This is pretty much like your Eidolon hunting uh, focus score right here. So that's just a brief overview, but there's a lot more to each of these. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about focus before we get into the specifics of these. So focus is going to cap at 250,000 focus per day and an extra 5,000 per mastery rank that you are. So 250,000 plus 5,000 per MR is what your cap would be. There are three different ways to get focus. We'll go over the passive way first. So the passive way to get focus is through lenses. If you look at all of my uh, slots here, they have these little icons, right? This little, little Nairu icon here. That's the Zeneric icon. That's the Matarai icon. And it's because all of these have lenses. This one has a, a Matarai lens and it has one dot because it's a small lens. My Caratinos has a Matarai lens as well, but this is two dots because it's a greater Matarai lens. And this, you know, Xerdris has a Xenoric, yada, 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 you, you, you get it. Now, lenses can only go on your four primary slots. So it's gonna be your Warframe, your primary weapon, your secondary weapon, and your melee. And what lenses do is they convert a little bit of the affinity you get with those weapons or Warframe into focus. So if you have your little Caratinos out and you're beating stuff, a little bit of that affinity 
is going to be going towards whatever uh, lens focus school you put on. Or if you have your AccuCore as your secondary, same thing, same thing with the uh, primary. Um, Warframe is a little bit different and it's just because if you get kills with your Warframe, it's gonna go right to your uh, uh, focus school lens that you have there. But the primary, the secondary, and the melee slot always give a little bit of their affinity to the actual Warframe slot too. So even if you were playing a Warframe that didn't get kills, like maybe he doesn't have, um, a, like a Necros, for instance, like, let's just say Necros. I know his little specters could kill things, but they don't really do it very efficiently. So if you're playing a Necros, for instance, like it would be very hard to actually get affinity from his kills. But a little bit of the affinity you get from um, the other slots always go towards your, your Warframe. So you'll still get um, your little lens working in that way. Okay, so let's talk about how to put these lenses on. So I'm gonna go to my Exergis here. My Exergis has a Xenric lens on. So I'm gonna go to Upgrade. I'm gonna to go to Actions on the bottom. And you see it brings up uh, this panel here. And at the very end, it tells us we have a Xenric lens. If I wanted to uh, change it though, I could click on it. And let's say I, want, I wanted a greater Xenric lens, right? Like maybe I just unlocked a greater. I have a regular Xenric lens. Well, I want to put a greater on. So I just click on here. It's going to tell me, do, you, do I want to install the greater lens? It's going to destroy the old one. That's another thing too. You cannot remove lenses once they're on. Once they're on, you can either just keep them on, or if you want to replace it, then the old one's going to be destroyed. So I'm, I, don't, I don't care too much about destroying my old, like little crappy uh, regular Xenric lens. So I'm okay with that. So we'll put this one on. Focus lens successfully installed. And if we look at our build here, I mean, we can check this in a few, way, a few ways. If we go to actions, it'll say greater Xenric lens there. But even on our build here, if we look here, it says Exergis rank 30, and now it has a two tick Xenric. And if we go back, we can also check through here. So it says Exergis, and then we have a little Xenric symbol with two ticks now, because now we have a uh, greater Xenric lens on our Exergis. Now with these lenses, uh, you can do a few different things. You can, if you really, really just want to push one focus school, if you're like, man, I really like Xenric, I need so much energy, then you can just plop all Xenric on all four of these things, right? You could have Xenric on your Warframe, Xenric on your Xergic, Xenric on your Akikor, Keratinos, and then all of that's just going to be converted into Xenric uh, uh, focus. Or if you're if you're in it for the long game and you plan on just unlocking everything, you can kind of do what I did and just do like one of each. You know, you can have like an Nairu, a Xenric, a Matarai, uh, a Naramon, and uh, it'll be giving you focus towards there. Now you can only have one focus school active at a time, but you can still get focus for the schools that aren't active. So don't worry about that. Don't worry that like, oh, on my... Well, actually, sorry, it said it right there. On my Warframe, I only I have Naramon active, but all my my things are like you know Nairu and Zenric. Like, don't worry about that. You're still actually getting focused for those schools. It's just this is just what's active right now. Okay. So that's lenses. The second way to get focus is going to be converting Eidolon shards to focus. So Eidolon hunting should be its own video. I, I should make my own video on that. So I, I'm not gonna like go into that. Um, but when you kill or capture Eidolons, you're gonna get Eidolon shards. So you're gonna pick whatever focus school you wanna spend these on. So let me let me say I wanted to, uh, I don't know, what, I've, what I've, have I been neglecting here? Maybe Matarai. So I'm gonna click on Matarai. I'm gonna go into it. And I'm gonna go to focus conversion. So bottom right, focus conversion. It's gonna show me all my Eidolon shards. And I can, I can go, okay, maybe I want to do one uh, Radiant Shard. That's going to give me 40,000. One Eidolon Shard. That's going to give me 2,500. And one Brilliant, which is going to give me 25,000. That's a lot of focus right there. So this is not a passive way to get it. Like, this is an active way of getting it. You just go in here and you get a big, just, you know, giant dump of focus all at once. Convert. Bam. And I just got a bunch of focus there from Matarai. So that's the second way of getting focus is using uh, Eidolon shards to convert. Now the third way of getting focus is pickups and enemies. So for pickups, as you're doing pretty much every mission, 
you're randomly going to get these little uh, tokens that appear on the map randomly. They have the focus symbol and they're yellow. And I think they make a sound too when you get close to them. But when you click, when you pick them up, they're going to give you 5,000 focus to whatever your, your active focus school is. So if I have Matterai on, it's going to give me 5,000 to Matterai. But then it's also going to give me a 10 times affinity conversion for 45 seconds, which is going to help like my lenses basically. So you get 5,000 to whatever your active one is. And then you get a 10 times conversion to whatever your, your, you have on for your lenses. And then for enemies, there are certain enemies that when you kill them, you just get straight up flat focus to whatever your active school is. And that's going to be, let me clear here, if I type in Thrax, it's going to be the Legatus and the Centurion. Let me spawn these in so I can show you guys. These guys are in the Zarin, man. So once you unlock the Zarimons, you'll, uh, you'll be fighting these guys. And there's actually quite a bit of them per map. So you can get a lot of focus that way too, because that's 2,500 every time you kill one of these guys. And it's not just you. If an ally kills them, you get that uh, focus too. So, Or if you kill them, your allies get that focus as well. That's those two guys. And the other one, I can't spawn these guys in, unfortunately, <laughs> is going to be uh, Void Angels. Void Angels are going to give you 15,000 focus. And then the baby Void Angels that you uh, encounter on Void Armageddon, there's like they're smaller versions of the regular uh, Void Angels. The baby Void Angels are going to give you 7,500. So half of what a regular Void Angel gives you. So those are the three ways of gaining focus. We have the lenses we went over. We have the conversion of Eidolon Shards into focus. And then we have the pickups and enemies. Okie dokie, we went over that. So I think now we can finally get into the focus schools, like doing the actual specifics on them so let's go over nairu first because like as you could see with my uh <laughs> my focus points that i have extra here or nairu is my favorite and it's mostly because i'm lazy so <laughs> so we'll start with nairu um something to know about all focus schools really is that they're going to have way bound abilities way bound abilities are actually abilities towards all focus schools once they are fully unlocked. So if you were just starting in Unairu and let's say you only had one point into Last Gasp and one point into Vengeance, that's only going to affect Unairu. But once they are fully unlocked, once Vengeance is uh, has three ticks and its diamond and Last Gasp has three ticks and its diamond, these abilities are going to be available on all focus schools. So because I've been playing the game for a long time and I have all this already, I have all of the waybounds for the other focus schools. So even though I'm playing as Unairu right now, I have the Zeneric waybounds, I have the Matarai waybounds, the Vazarin waybounds, the Naramon waybounds. And so when you're just starting in focus schools, I guess you could look at the waybounds as Unairu specific or whatever focus school it is. But once you're mid game or end game and they're fully maxed, like they're not really Unairu specific waybounds. These are for everything. So, and again, you could tell that because they have the little diamond, right? They're, every school is going to have two abilities that are waybounds. So, if you look here, they're all three ticks, you know, tick, 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 tick. But there's two of them that have the uh, diamond at the end. Alrighty. So, let's get into Unairu here. So, first one and the passive is going to be poise. So when you transfer in and out of operator, you're gonna get a 40 second immunity to slow stagger and knockdown. Pretty nice, but it does require you to be transferring in and out. Stone, st st stone skin is going to work no matter what. You don't even have to ever transfer into your operator. This works all the time, no matter what. So increases your armor for your Warframe and operator by 200. Well, because I play mostly health and armor Warframes, um, that's why I like Unairu. It's just 200 armor that I don't have to think about. It just gets added to whatever build I'm, I'm working on. And it, it helps me uh, hit my armor cap that I want to hit uh, way, way easier. So those are the passives there. Let's go over Unairu's active abilities. So the first ability for Unairu creates a 8 meter radius field that lasts for 30 seconds and disables the shields of enemies that enter it. Magnetic boost is going to, when you Void Sling out of your field, it refreshes refreshes its duration and increases the radius. 
Okay, let's give that a little look here. So this is all about removing shields. So let, let's uh, get rid of those Thraxes and let's summon in some Corpus guys because they got the shields. All right, I'm gonna come in the middle here. I'm gonna press my one. Bam, you see all our shields are gone. Field's kind of small though, so let's make it bigger by voice slinging out of it. And that should increase the, the size. Oh yeah, look at that field, look how big it is now. So now it's really uh, encompassing the whole thing. And all their shields are gone. That's perfect. Okay. Let's look at Unaira's second ability. Caustic Strike. Second ability launches an energy bomb that explodes in an eight meter radius and it strips 100% of armor. So this one was shields and Caustic Strike is armor. Um, you could also detonate it while it's in air by just pressing the button again, like while it's in air. And then Unairu Wisp is 100% chance to summon an Unairu Wisp per enemy hit by Caustic Strike. The Wisp will seek out the nearest ally and increase operator damage. That's kind of weird, but I guess it's a little extra. Okie dokie, let's check out uh, Caustic Strike here. Now, of course, Corpus don't have armor, so let's get rid of these Corpus guys. We're going to summon some Grenears. Bam, look at that, their armor's gone. Pretty big radius, too. If I wanted to air burst it, I would just press the button again while it's in the air. So, just like that. Works pretty good. All right, let's look at the little extra that Anaira has. So we went over the first ability, the passive, the second ability. Um, the extra is going to be reinforced return. Warframe is invulnerable after four, for ugh. Warframe is invulnerable for four seconds after operator is downed. Eh, that's okay. Static purge, hundred percent chance to clear transference static on kill while reinforced return is active. Eh, that, that's okay. Not super impressive, but I guess I guess they're they're technically positives. Okay. Let's go over Unairu's Waybound abilities. Again, these are abilities that will eventually be available for every uh, focus school, but these are technically just from Unairu. So last gasp, revive your Warframe by transferring to Operator and killing three enemies in 15 seconds. So when your Warframe goes down, it's going to uh, tell you um, to press your Transference button. Once you press your Transference button, you'll have 15 seconds to kill three enemies. And then if you do that, you'll resurrect yourself. So it's really good for self-resing. Uh, Vengeance is going to increase the damage while you're in that last gasp for your operator by 100% and another 25% per second. So it makes it easier to get those three kills while you're in that last gasp. So that is everything about Unairu that we went over there. Uh, next focus school we're going to be looking at is Vazarin. Okay. Let's look at the passive. So Vazarin's passive is Mending Unity. This is going to work no matter what, all the time. Increases affinity radius by 25 meters. Doesn't seem super impressive, but like we were saying before, there are certain Warframes where their abilities scale off of affinity range. Warframes like Harrow, Warframes like Trinity. You know, not all of their abilities, but some of them. I think Harrow is two abilities, and I think Trinity is two abilities as well that scale off of affinity range. And so, you know, you can't mod... You can't use mods to increase those abilities' ranges, but you still might want to increase their ranges. And so you would have to use Vazarin uh, to increase those ranges out. So that's why it's really good. Uh, Mending Soul is the other passive here. So the first four revives are instantaneous and an additional 100% faster after that. That's kind of nice. It's a little extra. Okay. Uh, Vazarin's first ability is going to be Guardian Shell. Your first ability manifests a barrier on the operator and allies in affinity range. It is invulnerable for four seconds when first created and damage inflicted while it's invulnerable will be added to its base health to 500. Guardian Break. When the Guardian Shell breaks, you get Warframe Shield Regeneration increased by 150 and Regeneration Delay is, in, is reduced by 80% for 12 seconds. So it gives you a big boost in, uh, in your Shield Regeneration rate. Let's take a little gander at that there. So we're gonna go up here, Oop. press my one, bam. In this time, uh, if enemies are hitting me, it's gonna increase that 500, but because you know the enemies are passive, it's just gonna be 500. So if you look at the top right, it says guardian shell 500. It's that little triangle with the circle, 500. Could be, again, it could be more than that if enemies were hitting me in that four second time. 
So, and I believe this will carry over. Yeah, it carries over to your Warframe too. So it's still up there, Guardian Shell 500. Alrighty, let's look at Vazarin's second ability. It's gonna be Void Snare. Second ability launches a projectile that spins up a Vortex Trap on impact. And you could detonate it in mid-flight, same thing, kind of like the Unira thing. And it lasts for eight seconds, and it sucks enemies in. And Void Slinging through trapped enemies grants allies 100 health. That's a little weird. And the uh, augment for it here is allies touched by your Void Sling are granted immunity from damage for five seconds and healed for 60% over five seconds for 10 energy cost. So you can touch your allies with your Void Sling. All right, let's check out Void Snare, see what this does here. This is a really cool ability. Um, this is the second time I'm doing this uh, video because the first time I was having like a coughing fit. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. But the first time it was kind of bugged this uh, this here. It should shoot out and let me like actually like aim it and shoot it places, but it was kind of spawning it like where I was. There we go. Hey, it worked that time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it sucks enemies in. And they stay there for eight seconds. You know, you can combo wombo with that with a bunch of things. You can like maybe have a melee build and you can go and then switch to melee or switch to your Warframe. Start whacking these dudes off. Or, you know, whatever you want to do. So, okay. So we went over the passive. We went over the one and the two. Let's go over the weird one here, the void regen. Void mode. So that's the invisibility mode when you hold your control button. I think it's control by default. Or maybe I, maybe I uh, switch my keybinds. I don't know. Whatever your void mode is. So void mode starts going to, it's going to start healing you at plus 10 health per second. And it's going to increase by 10 per second up to a maximum of 50. Okay, but this is just your operator, unfortunately. It doesn't work for your Warframe. Squad regen. When void regen reaches its maximum, it is applied to squad members with a fitted range for 60 seconds. It's pretty cool. So that is the uh, uniques for the Vazarin, but let's go to the Waybounds now. Remember, the Waybounds can affect all of the trees as long as they're fully upgraded. So we have Enduring Tides, which is increases operator health and armor by 200%, and Rejuvenating Tides. Operator health regeneration increased by six per second and is doubled while controlling the Warframe. Okie dokie. So that is Vazarin. We are done with Vazarin now. Let us move on to Xenoric, all about energy. So middle one here, energy pulse. Energy pickups grant 50% additional energy over five seconds. So that's great. Sounds great. It is great. But a lot of mistakes that I see people doing is they don't realize that energy regeneration, not energy gain, but energy regeneration doesn't work while you have a channeled ability active. So I'll see people like using Xenoric with like Titania or while using Gloom or something like that. And anything, pretty much anything in the game, there might be like one or two exceptions, but pretty much anything in the game that restores energy per second or energy over time doesn't work while you have an, a channeled ability. You know, you could pick up orbs, you can get more energy per orb picked up with uh, channeled abilities, but anything that gives you energy over time doesn't work with channeling. So just remember that with energy pulse. Inner Might is the other passive. Allows abilities to be cast without using energy or shields, but requires 60 seconds to recharge. What does that mean? That means once every 60 seconds, you'll be able to cast something for free. You probably won't even realize it happened, but it's going to be free, and it's just going to help you once in a while with your energy conservation. All right, that's the passives. Let's go over the actives now. Active is going to be Wellspring for their for uh, Xenorix 1. So first ability creates a well of energy for 8 seconds. Allies passing through the well. Get five energy per second for 30 seconds. Remember, that is energy per second, so that doesn't work with channeled abilities. So just keep that in mind. And then the augment here, Hardened Wellspring. Use your first ability again inside of a Wellspring to increase its size, boost its duration by 20%, or 20 seconds, and grant 20% ability strength to those inside. So you're going to cast your Wellspring, and then you might as well press it again to activate the Hardened Wellspring. So let's show that off. So one, it's going to make the little wellspring, but I'm going to press one again, bam, and then it gets bigger. Just like in real life. All right, let's go over Xenorix 2. 
Um, was it this one? No, it wasn't. Temporal Drag, there it is. Second ability emits a radial burst, slowing enemies it touches by 80% for 10 seconds. And then the Augment here, Temporal Shot. Precision Headshot Damage increased by 100% on enemies that are afflicted with Temporal Drag. Okie dokie. Go in here. I'm going to press my 2. You see how he kind of has like little floaters around him? So now I have more I have more headshot damage on them. Same thing here. They all have those little sparklies around them. So more headshot damage. I think that's his head. I don't know what that is actually. Oh, it's his back. Kind of a meh ability. I mean, I, I guess you can't complain. Everything else about Zenerik is amazing. So it, it could have one meh ability. And I'm sure you could probably find a use case for it too. Okay, so the other uh, weird thing that's not a waybound is going to be Disarming Sling. So Disarming Sling is slinging through enemies, has a 50% chance to disarm them. And then No Quarter is going to be killing a disarmed enemy, increases operator energy rate, energy regenerate by 10% for 10 seconds, stacking four times. Alrighty, so we're just going to sling through some enemies here. This is not an ability, this is just, just augment to your Void Sling, basically. Oops, I'm just trying to sling on my Warframe. There we go. And now a bunch of them are going to be disarmed. Oh my goodness, I don't have AI turned on. Why are they attacking me? I think that's a bug. Okay. So that is the unique things from Zenric, but let's go over the Waybounds. Remember, Waybounds can affect everything once they're uh, fully upgraded. So we have Void Siphon increases Operator Energy Regeneration by 90%, and Void Flow increases Operator Energy by 90%. Okie dokie, that's all of it for Zenric. Zenric's done. Let's go over Naramon. So the passive for Naramon is going to be Power Spike. Melee combo counter now decays while out of combat by five every few seconds instead of depleting completely. So normally when you're at 12 times combo, let's say you have to move locations or you have to hit a life support or maybe you have to do another objective or something or you have to go for a revive. A lot of times like you'll lose your combo because you're not hitting enemies in that time. So you'll go from a 12 times combo to zero. Well, this one, it goes from 12 to seven. So you have a little bit more time before you completely go down to zero. So like, let's say you go from 12 to seven. Well, then when you start whacking off dudes again, you'll, it's easier to go from seven to 12 rather than zero to 12. You know what I'm saying? So it makes the uh, melee a little bit better there. Other passive is gonna be affinity spike. Kills from melee attacks grant 45% more melee affinity. That probably has a use case somewhere, maybe like with focus farming, maybe? I'm not really sure, but. It looks kind of crappy to me, but I'm sure there's some kind of a use case for it. Okay, Naramon's one. Where is it? Is it this one? First ability, yes. Void Levitation. First ability creates a six meter wide shockwave lasting four seconds, and it, it produces the lifted status on enemies it touches. Kind of boring. I probably wouldn't use it too much, but, but let's combo it with this one here, Lethal Levitation, which is the uh, augment for it. Additional 50% weapon damage per lifted enemy attacked by the operator, and it stacks up to four times, and it lasts for 60 seconds. That's a long, long buff. So all we have to do is press our, our one, lift a bunch of enemies, attack them with the operator, and bam, we got a 60 second buff. And as long as we can attack four enemies, we get that full 200%. You know, 200% flat damage, it's flat damage, it's not a lot, but I mean, that's a that's more than a serration mod. So like, that's still pretty good. That's that's a mod without having to have a mod, basically. So let's uh, let's test that out here. So certain um, amps might make this a little bit easier than others or certain scaffolds, for instance. Like I have this scaffold, I forgot exactly what it's called, but it like kind of like boomerangs around and just like hits a bunch of enemies. So all I really have to do is just middle click to shoot my scaffold out and it'll give me those four hits on my operator. So I'll do one here, boom, and then I press that and it just kind of bounces around. I'll watch, I think it only hit one dude that time. Oh no, I got four, okay. 
So pretty much as easy as that, you know? Bam, you lifted status, make sure you attack these guys and you can go back to your Warframe and you got it. 60 second buff, 200 damage. Pretty damn good. Alrighty. And, it, and if you pay attention, because remember we were saying Naramon is very melee focused and it is very melee focused, but look at the wording for this lethal levitation. Nothing here says melee damage. This is just weapon damage. So this will actually work for ranged weapons too. So we'll get into the two now though for uh, Naramon and this is melee focused. So Sling Stun. Second ability increases the width of the next Void Sling by 200%. And enemies hit are vulnerable to finishers and take more finisher damage. Okay. And then the augment here, Killer's Rush. Initiating a finisher as an operator switches to the Warframe and increases your melee critical chance by 50% for 40 seconds. That's another really long buff. This is 40 seconds, and that was 60 seconds for the lethal levitation. Um, but if you look at Killer's Rush, the wording here is melee critical chance. So this is melee critical chance, not just weapon critical chance. So this is only for melee weapons, this one. So what do we have to do? We have to press two, slink through an enemy, go back to him, finish him, done. That should activate our buff for him. Let's give that a try here. All right, press my two, slink through an enemy, do a finisher, it automatically switches to my Warframe. Boom, and if you look in the top right, I have a 40 second, 50% melee crit buff. It's down to like 32 seconds now, but you get it. All right, so we went, we did the passives. We did the one and the two. Let's do the, the weird tree here. So we have opening slam. Performing a slam as an operator switches to Warframe and grants double combo gain for 20 seconds. Interesting. And then amp spike. Transfer to operator with eight times combo multiplier to increase amp damage by 100%. That would be, like, probably good in maybe some of the Zeramon missions, maybe, like, Lua Conjunction. Um, but I, I feel like most of the time you wouldn't be using this other than those. Let's check out this opening slam, though, for, for double combo gain. That's pretty cool. So performing a slam as an operator switches to Warframe. So you don't even have to switch to Warframe. It'll just do it for you, I guess. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to kind of, like, slam it to the ground. Bam. And it switches right to the Warframe there. And you get double double combo gain for 20 seconds. Already, And that's it for the Naramon specific stuff, except for the Waybound. So let's look at the Waybounds here. Remember, Waybounds affect all of the trees as long as they're fully upgraded. So we're going to have Mind Step increases Operator Movement Speed by 30%. And Far Sling increases the maximum Void Sling Distance by 30%. So you could be slanging all over the place. That's it for Naramon. Naramon is done. Let's check Matarai next. Matarai is probably the most popular tree for... Um, for kind of a dumb reason, I feel like a lot of people, they just Google best focus school and it comes up Matarai because Matarai is the best focus school for Eidolons. Um, but for regular content, it's not necessarily the best. Um, but I think that's why it's so popular is because people just like Google best focus school. So let's go over Matarai here. The passive is going to be Phoenix Talons. Physical damage and operator damage increased by 30%. That's pretty nice. It's only 30%. It's not a lot. But eh, it's a little extra. Whatever. I'll take it. Power transfer is the other passive. Going to be 100% amp critical damage for 20 seconds on switching to operator. And 50% casting speed on switching to Warframe. That's kind of cool. All right. Those are the passives. Let's look at the one. Now, Matarai, the, the passives are kind of meh, but the... Active abilities on Matarai are pretty friggin' crazy. That's why it's super popular for Eidolons, and we'll, you'll understand why here. So the one is going to be Void Strike. First ability consumes all of your operator energy and it increases uh, to increase damage for eight seconds. You deal 10% additional damage for every percentage of energy consumed. I'll just say if you consume all of your energy, that is 1,000% damage. So, and most of the time, that's what you're going to be doing on Matarai. So when you press your one, most of the time, it'll be a 1,000% damage increase for eight seconds. So it's not very long, but if you need to do heavy burst damage to a single massive target, this is like the best ability. Uh, and that's why it's popular for Eidolons, because if you're going for a, a joint hit, like a limb hit, or you're going to finally, you know, finish the Eidolon at the end to, to kill or capture... 
Uh, you do the Void Strike, you get a crap load of damage. It's going to basically guarantee a one-shot on your Sniper you're using. And you're good to go. So, but, I mean, it could be used in other things, too. Like, if you're doing Zaramon and you're fighting Void Angels, this is really good. Um, I guess you could use it against the Acolyte, too. But, like, melee weapons can also kill the Acolyte in, like, two seconds. Um, but any big, heavy target this is really good against. Um, it's only an eight-second buff, and this has a 40-second cooldown. So this is not something you can spam, like, very often. Let's look at the augment here. 40% weapon efficiency for operator and warframe while Void Strike is active. That's, that's kind of cool. It's a little extra to it. So just do the... Uh, we'll just show it off. There's not really much to show off about this. It's just going to basically give me a buff. It's not really going to do anything too crazy. Well, I mean, it does do crazy stuff. It's just the actual animation. It's just... It's right here. Right, throw his little arm in the air, and that's it. You have eight-second gigantic buff to... Uh, to kill dudes. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's look at Matterize number two here. And void Trigger is one. I think Contamination Wave is two. Second ability emits a Void Wave lasting two seconds that drenches enemies with Void Contamination, making them fifty percent more vulnerable to Operator damage for twenty seconds. This is Operator damage, okay? Not Warframe damage. Operator damage. Distilled Contamination. Killing an enemy affected by contamination waves makes all effective affected enemies 50% more vulnerable, while also making the effect last 10% longer, or 10 seconds longer. God, why, why do I keep saying 10%? 10 seconds longer. Maximum of two stacks. So um, this is just going to... It's kind of similar to the one where it's a damage boost. I mean, obviously, it's not as big as the, as the one's damage boost, but um, this is more of like a, a multi-hit, though. See, it's a very, very wide wave. Very, very wide wave. And it's going to increase your operator damage. So now you're going to do a crap load more damage to these guys. I like using off-meta uh, amps, so please don't make fun of me. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's look at the others. We went over the passive. We went over the two actives. Let's look at the uh, weird... Tree, which is going to be, you know, we might over a chain sling. 50% energy efficiency on consecutive void slings. It's pretty cool. Sling strength. Switching to a warframe after a chain sling adds 40% ability strength for 20 seconds. This is pretty much why on setup frames like Titania and Ivara, Matarai is pretty much like mandatory. And it's because of this ability, sling strength. Um, because setup frames, they, they, they're they able to kind of like snapshot their ability strength. And so the whole thing where this only lasts for 20 seconds, like you don't really have to worry about that on Avara or like Titania or other setup frames. I'm just more familiar with those two. So you could like, you could use this Void Sling twice, press whatever button you're, you know, you're doing. If you're Titania, you're going into her Pixie mode. If you're Avara, you're doing, you know, maybe her, uh, her uh, Dash Wire or her um, Prowl or taking out her Artis Artemis Bow. And you get a snapshotted 40% ability strength that'll last literally the entire time as long as you don't come out of whatever you went into. So for setup frames, sling strength is like god tier. For other warframes, it's like, eh, yeah, I, I, I might not want to go into operator and void sling twice just to cast an ability for a little bit more ability strength. But for setup frames, super freaking good. Okay, um, that is pretty much it for Matterize specifics, but let's go over the way bounds. So the first way bound is going to be inner gaze, increases energy for amps and void beam by 40%, and eternal gaze, increases energy regeneration rate for amps and void beam by 60%. It's pretty cool. So that's it for Matarai. We finished Matarai there. And uh, that's pretty much it on, on focus. Um, I want to go over kind of one combo wombo that i use sometimes not all the time but sometimes i think it's very powerful it's probably one of the most combo uh, powerful combo wombos in the game because you could basically just be immortal on any build and that's using uh Metari as your uh focus school and you're going to be mixing it with using um Unairu's uh, last gas. There it is. So if you die, you go to your warframe, or you go to your your operator, and you have to get three kills while you're an operator. You know we went over that already. 
But a lot of times in Steel Path Endurance, like your operator sucks. Your operator's pretty garbage in Steel Path Endurance. Like once enemies are level like 300 and above, he he's pretty doo doo. Like it's like hitting enemies with like wet noodles when you're when you're shooting at them. But when you are Matterai, you can use Void Strike to get a thousand percent damage, and it will help activating Last Gasp like a crap load. And there's a specific scaffold, I believe it's called the Propa Scaffold, that is like a little mini nuke. So you just Void Strike, Propa Scaffold, bam, back up to full health. Well, not full health, but you're back up to, uh, you know, your Warframe's back up. So that's a, a way to basically stay immortal. Uh, Void Strike does have that 40 second cooldown though, so I guess you can't do it like every five seconds. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's a way to basically stay immortal in the game. But you'd have to be willing at that point to use Matarai in every build, which I'm not. I like to switch up my, my focus schools depending on like what I'm doing. If I'm playing a health and armor Warframe, I'm usually using a Nairu. If I'm playing a Warframe that is uh, that has weird abilities that scale off of affinity range for some reason, I'm usually using Vazrin. If I'm playing a, a, a Warframe that needs energy like crazy uh, and doesn't have a channeled ability, like maybe like Protea, for instance, I'm using Xanaric all day long. Um, melee heavy Warframe, probably going to use Naramon. And if I'm doing Eidolons or if I'm using a setup Warframe, I'm using Matarai. So I think that is pretty much it, guys. Um, if you liked the video, consider giving it a like. If you haven't, haven't subbed yet, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm got new equipment, so please feel free to criticize me, good or bad, in the, the comments. Tell me how does the audio sound? Is it better? Is it worse? Is the video better or worse? Is it about the same? So just let me know, guys. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.